to the HODLcast. Today is October 7th. My name is Sasha Hodder, and we're going to be discussing the Celsius hearing. I attended the large Zoom hearing this morning, and it was pretty interesting. The first words from the judge's lips referenced the insider withdrawals, which were pretty significant and I've got to say pretty low. Usually the captain goes down with the ship. Well, not in this case. The insiders bailed right out right before they declared bankruptcy. Ex-CEO Alex Mashinsky and ex-CSO Daniel Leon pulled their entire funds from the custody accounts in May right before the collapse or suspension of all the other withdrawals. In bankruptcy accounts, insiders have what's called a presumption of insolvency, and they can be clawed back for up to a one-year period, anything that they took out for the previous year. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with the clawbacks. Anyone else can be clawed back for up to 90 days before the bankruptcy was declared. A guy named Jam Salad on Twitter went through the 14,500 page document with all the withdrawal history of every client on Celsius, and he found that during the 90-day look-back period, there were 348,193 withdrawals, belonging to a total of 106,000 names and totaling $4.3 billion. Note, the creditors are owed $5 billion, so those withdrawals and the amount owed are, are almost the same. 491 names withdrew $1 million or more. 6,000 742 names withdrew over 100,000 each. And the top name, wonder who this could be, they withdrew $56 million in the 90 days before declaring bankruptcy. From April 14th to May 8th, it was pretty much business as usual. The average um, $33 million was being withdrawn from the site each day, but then it really started to ramp up. And we don't know if this was just everyone was getting shook because the Terra Luna crash was happening right around then or if it was that the insiders realized they were going bankrupt. So on May 9th, there was 78 million. May 10th, 111 million. And May 12th, 481 million were withdrawn. Celsius insider Newt Goldstein, who's still at the company, he allegedly withdrew at least 11.8, so almost 12 million during the clawback period. He took to Twitter the other night trying to explain the difference between the custody and the earn program and how transfers between earn and custody, he said, can look like withdrawal. He put this elaborate spreadsheet that notably had no dates on it um, and showed how that can happen. And Cam Cruz, who actually spoke very eloquently, spoke on today's hearing, he said the real story here is that Newt Goldstein was admitting that transfers between earn and custody occur off chain, which means Celsius adjusts their record of account balances without actually transferring any underlying funds. We knew this was probably a Ponzi, but you know their own insider went on and pretty much confirmed that on Twitter yesterday. Tiffany Fong, who's been covering the, the case, she received a text message from an anonymous insider who said Alex didn't take a single withdrawal from his primary account until May 15th, at which point he started to Draining it. Um, he has nothing left in Celsius other than a bit of sell tokens. So much for all of his statements. He was going on these AMAs before he resigned saying, you know, I'm right there with you guys. I'm a creditor too. But, you know, him being a creditor was really like a few Celsius tokens compared to, you know, the millions that, that he had in there. So, you know, just another example of his lying, dishonest behavior. Uh, the informer said to Tiffany, and this just rings true. So many people submitted letters to the judge and Simon Dixon accounts for it on Twitter. People have been reaching out to him, but it's just, you know, the same sentiment coming over and over. But the, the guy texting Tiffany said, I'm just trying to show how disgusting these people are at the end of the day. I had about 200,000 stuck on there and that was all my savings for the past five years. It was meant to buy a house. It was meant for my kids' education and my retirement. Now it's pissed at the wind in the hands of these monsters. I really 
really upsetting to hear stories like that. You know, not only did they lose everyone's money, they doxed all their users. And this was a requirement of the bankruptcy court. So Celsius owes over 500,000 creditors, nearly $5 billion. And they published a 14,000 page report that has each user's name and wallet address. Now, Celsius did object to this disclosure, but the bankruptcy court, they require this information to determine a fair claim. Several users on the September 1st hearing pleaded with the court not to publish full names. They said it's going to result, you know, in physical violence, um, maybe even death for some people getting killed over their assets. Who knows if that's a stretch or not, but I sure wouldn't want my name and crypto wallet, you know, published for the world to see. At first, the court wanted to even publish people's home addresses with it, but they also redacted email addresses. So you just have the name and the wallet address. Celsius was coming under a lot of scrutiny by the judge saying they weren't being transparent for not producing this information earlier on in the case. But now that they did produce it, everyone on Twitter is having a field day saying it's it's just so negligent to put this information. We have the independent examiner now. The judge recently appointed Shoba Pele. She's going to make a report for the Department of Justice, and she's going to re- prepare an interim report with her findings in the next few weeks. She has a pretty deep experience. I was impressed with the way she spoke at the hearing, and then I went on her LinkedIn page and looked at some of her formal cases. She spent 11 years working as an assistant U.S. attorney in the Northern District of Illinois. She took 18 federal criminal trials to verdict. She argued nine appeals. She chaired complex investigations and jury trials. She's investigated and prosecuted several dozens of cyber and dark web marketplace matters. And she has a deep knowledge of virtual currencies. So we'll see what happens here. It also says she has a lot of experience interviewing witnesses and victims with cyber crime. She's put a lot of people in jail, so I don't think she'll hesitate here if if jail time is warranted um, for this kind of fraud. So then we come to the custody versus earn debate, whether the custody users, so those are the people that just put their assets on the platform, but we're not earning that sweet, you know, Ponzi yield, whether they should get their money out first. A lot of them were non-accredited investors and the terms of service actually were changed in January. So then we come to the custody versus earn. So Celsius changed its terms of service in July of 2021 to distinguish between the people who were in custody only accounts and the people that were earning that you know, Ponzi yield, basically. The UCC, the Unsecured Creditors Committee, has been arguing that the custody account holders are supposed to get their money back before the earn holders because the title to their assets was not given to Celsius. The judge, the lawyers, the trustee, and the examiners have all been hesitant to agree to any withdrawals thus far, and certain state regulators as well. They're waiting for the account records, which were disclosed last week, to then look through and have the trustee and the examiner prepare a report of who should get what. Cam Cruz, he spoke up during the hearing. He was representing himself pro se, and he had done some significant research and found that found that the funds that were earmarked for custody or earn were actually entirely commingled. Um, everything was deposited in one wallet. And then as we saw from Nuke's tweet earlier, like they were just moving it offline or they weren't really even moving it. They were not keeping track very well of whose accounts were earn or custody. Custody. Um, the deposits were going in, even for custody holders, and that same money, someone would put it in for custody, it would get paid out on a yield the same day. So the money was just flowing. It was just a complete Ponzi, basically, by the look of it. But if that's the case, he raised a big issue around the title. When Celsius updated its terms of service in 2021, first of all, they didn't require any affirmative assent. No one had to click a box to agree that the title transferred over to Celsius. And from a tax perspective, that's not actually how Celsius was treating the assets. If people were giving the assets over to Celsius, Cam argues that 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 would be a disposal of assets under U.S. tax laws. But then Celsius was encouraging users that investing with Celsius or depositing with Celsius was actually giving them a tax deferral. And that's what they had on their 1099 forms. And then also, even after they changed the terms of service in 2021, they were still always using the language, your coins in every video 
code that Alex Mashinsky was putting out and all the website copy, it was calling them your coins. So people were not on notice that they were actually giving custody over to Celsius. In that case, he's arguing the earned people and the custody people both should be treated the same. He actually put some tweets out that had the network of, uh, he really did a lot of investigation on where these funds are going. And he shared a video by Daniel Leon, who, who recently resigned. And it looks like in the video, I'll play it in a second, but it looks like the yield is actually in lieu of a marketing budget. Let me know what you think in the comments. Get this. On Sunday, Robinhood paid $5 million for a 30-second Super Bowl ad. On Monday, Celsius paid out over $5 million back to our community. We each had $5 million to spend. They chose to pay for a sleek ad. We choose to pay you. They sought to improve their PR. We sought to improve your net worth. Here's a radical idea for you. Imagine if large financial institutions took their insanely large PR budgets and reinvested that money into their customers instead. Celsius is also asking for a bellwether trial. So this will be a sample trial that gives everyone involved in the case a sense of what the future will hold. It indicates trends in litigation and can help plaintiffs and defendants determine how best to proceed. It usually includes a smaller subset of a large group of plaintiffs, and the verdict issued in a bellwether trial is not binding. Basically, it's like a charade where the company can see if they're going to end up having to pay out a lot of money, maybe they're better off settling. It gives them a chance to get some insight into how a jury trial really would turn out. The Committee for Unsecured Creditors also supports the bellwether trial, and they'd like to see the bellwethers litigate the case. I don't want to be too cynical, but um, that just seems like a waste of money to me. <laughs> like going through this whole trial that's non-binding so the Celsius can decide how much they should pay out, like just go through the actual steps. Some notable bellwether trials in the past are, you know, Monsanto had one where the bellwether jury awarded $289 million to the small subset of plaintiffs that were, were doing the case. And it was all about whether um, Roundup caused cancer. And it led Monsanto to actually settle the case without taking the bigger plaintiff group to trial. And they settled for, I think, a lot more, you know, a, a big sum of money. But the, the bellwether trial gave them the information to calculate what the appropriate settlement was. And similarly, Bayer, they had an 80 million loss in a bellwether trial, and then they settled the larger case for 6.9 billion, which was with 450,000 plaintiffs. There's been a lot of talk about restructuring plans. Simon Dixon has partnered with Salt Lending to create a new restructuring plan that supposedly will comply with regulators and try and make the community whole. There seems to be a consensus that the creditors don't want their assets sold off by auction. You know, we had the Voyager auction last week and the assets get sold for pennies on the dollar and they're trying to make something more of this company as Celsius 2.0 if you will, and whatever plan comes up, it has to be agreed by all major vested parties and by the judge. So it ha certainly has to have some component of regulatory compliance before it can be approved by everyone. Yes, yeah, Celsius is trying to come up with their own plan and a an internal call by this new Goldstein was leaked. He was discussing what seemed to be kind of a preposterous idea where they're talking about wrapping the firm's debt into a token and issuing this IOU token. And this is a company, you know, it's being investigated by several state securities offices. So this, this plan just sound absolutely brain dead. These IOU tokens will be securities, debt securities. Like really for something like this to work for retail investors, the Celsius would have to basically do an IPO. There's no exchange that's licensed to hold securities for retail investors. T0 can do it. I think Simon's Bank to the Future might have a broker dealer license. So they may be able to help out with that too. There might be something along those lines. I haven't been following this aspect of the case that much and until it's really approved or even put forward it's it's all just talk right now but the court's planning to move forward with an auction later this month so they've only got a very short window to get any kind of plan like this into motion simon did respond to nukes leaked call with 
a big tweet thread outlining the vast regulatory challenges with, with Nuke's ridiculous plan and stating that he could only get behind it if Celsius's lawyers would publish an opinion letter that the IOU tokens are not securities. Anyone that's been following the crypto space with the SEC, you know, they know it's a, it's a pretty big deal to issue those opinion letters and it's getting harder and harder to find a basis that they're not securities. And there's a number of state regulators at the table already, including Vermont, Texas, Wisconsin, and now Washington has joined. And Reuters reported that there's over 40 states with open investigations against Celsius. Celsius is attempting to sell at least 23 million worth of stable coins. Um, they're scheduled to go up for auction on November 1st, and there will be a bidding process very similar to what just happened at Voyager, but for other assets. And it's still open for anyone to submit these plans or restructuring plans. And a lot of people are objecting to the sale of the stable coins, yet the, the examiner has entered a motion stating that it's it's, it's premature. She needs more time to um, to review the disclosures that were made last week and understand who has the best claims. And she thinks it should be de denied, like any sale of assets should be denied until the examiner report is filed, which is scheduled in a few more weeks. So it's just not ready yet to release assets. And these things, they tend to move really slow. Like, you know, look at Mt. Gox is still in bankruptcy. Um, crypto Capital, the Canadian case, that's still in bankruptcy. These things just, they don't move at the speed of light. It takes years. Um, so the the dates for, for now is the initial bid deadline for retail platform assets is happening November 1st. The final bid deadline for retail platform assets is November 15th. The auction for retail platform assets is November 18th. And the sale hearing is November 28th. People have to file a claim. If you were invested with Celsius, you're expected to review that 14 and a half thousand page disclosure that had every customer's financial history. And you've got to check and make sure that the balance they have listed for you is correct. If it is, you don't need to file anything. But if there is a discrepancy, you need to notify the court and they'll send you details on how to how to file that um, disclosure. It hasn't been released yet. And Celsius themselves, they haven't backed off. They're very litigious considering everything going on. So they, they've not only sued their former money manager, Jason Stone, their former bank, Prime Trust, but last week they also sued their mining provider, Core Scientific, for allegedly violating the terms of their agreement of the bankruptcy rules. Celsius currently owes Core Scientific 5.4 million. So it's, you know, like they owe them money and then they go and sue them because Core Scientific stops selling to them for, you know, mining equipment that they're not getting paid for. They're the ones that owe them money. They're saying Core Scientific allegedly, you know, failed to deploy the devices on a timely schedule. Well, when someone owes me money, I tend to fall off the schedule too. Like uh, a contract is breached at the point that the one company doesn't pay. But Celsius is saying, well, we're not allowed paying because we're in bankruptcy. So we expect that Core Scientific will continue giving us devices for free, giving us electricity and, you know, wait till the end of the bankruptcy proceeding to, to get paid, you know, as a creditor. What's even the most crazy of this whole story, Chrissy Mashinsky, Alex... Mashinsky's wife, she posted a picture on October 5th of them. It looks like they're out at some big celebration saying, oh, happy birthday, Alex. Uh, you know, I just can't imagine when you've lost $5 billion of 500,000 people's money that you, you have much to celebrate, but it might be out, you know, it might be his last free birthday. <laughs> we'll see. And then she has this website that sells t-shirts and one of the t-shirts says unbankrupt yourself and to me that's just so crass her husband lost all these people's money she herself took several withdrawals like mo i think it was three million at least in the clawback period the whole thing you know that they sold everyone on over the years was unbank yourself like use us we're not a bank when it turns out they were absolutely acting in the capacity a bank would act, just not doing it well, not having any of the regulatory oversight that causes banks to generally be more trustworthy than this. And then I saw on the website that they're involved with some kind of blockchain, strong blockchain, which I went to a YouTube video and saw that it's also like 
way down and something's wrong with it. They're saying, I discovered that one of the challenges local manufacturers face is proving sh to shoppers the authenticity of their products. Since being able to tell those who care whether a product is locally made in America or homegrown is so important, I wondered, what if we could verify that the products sold using USA Strong.io were made in the United States? Business owners were enthusiastic about the prospect, and I introduced Strong Blockchain TM to the site to help manufacturers verify that their products are made in America. Now, I couldn't find any evidence of the actual blockchain on the site. I don't think these kind of blockchains work. Like I've heard people talk about them. They're just like data. You know, it's like uh, one Walmart blockchain, their lettuce and stuff like that. I never wish anyone to go to jail, but it's like if anyone ever deserved to, I don't know. They just stole everyone's money, with, took it out themselves and then go and laugh in everyone's face saying, oh, happy birthday. Look at us at this big party buy my t-shirt with this strong blockchain nonsense and unbankrupt yourself. Like it's one thing people can choose to unbank themselves. People made mistake by trusting these people for sure. You know, not your keys, not your coin, but that's the problem with this kind of thing. Like all these regulators are now, you know, hyper-focused on our industry. They conflate these centralized garbage scammers for you know bitcoin and you know decentralized projects that really are offering a lot of freedom to people a better life and you know all kinds of good stuff so it's just frustrating to see this kind of behavior i guess the best thing to do is wish them well and like hope that this all resolves for people if people lost money you know maybe they'll learn a lesson and it will change their investing behavior so they buy more bitcoin keep it cold storage and bitcoin from here will go up and everyone will become whole just by you know the lesson they've learned this hard lesson or that's all i've got thank you and if you did make it all the way to the end of this video please do consider liking the video and subscribing thank you have a good one Bye.